I think you need to take the supercharger off and put twin turbos on this thing with the supercharger. What the? The Hellion on the bullet? Yeah. Two turbos right here. And just delete these and two big turbos. Hmm. Yeah, not a bad idea. So today's plan is to start working on the 98 Cobra. I, uh, I already got the car jacked up and I'm slowly kind of getting things ready. I drained the coolant in the radiator and I am starting to work on the motor to get it ready to be pulled. As you guys can see, the car is actually in the garage here at the house. So I did want to take it out to the shed, but I ended up not doing that. And uh, looks like we're gonna be working on the car here in the garage. Since we pretty much got the garage cleaned out almost like we want to, there's a lot more space in here now and um, plenty of room for two cars, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. This is about as far as I've gotten, and this is probably about 40 minutes worth of work. Now, one thing, I was pulling this radiator tube out, and there was still coolant inside of there, so I think what I gotta do is drain it from the thermostat right there somehow. But yeah, I think I need to go ahead and unbolt somewhere. Maybe just pull the hose off from the thermostat right there and let it drain would probably be the best bet. But yeah, it appears there's still coolant in these tubes, so need to get that out for sure. The jack got a little uh, wet down there, but oh well, it happens. Definitely uh, watch out if you're pulling that tube off. Okay, I got that mess cleaned up, pushed the car back, got a little bit more uh, space to work with here, so Top part of the motor, you know, is almost ready to go. Uh, I still need to get the belt off and I was looking at this and I'm like, what the heck is that? So I've never seen this before on any of the new edges. I guess it was like a SN95 thing, but it just looks like extra parts to the EGR system. Um, doesn't look like it's too hard to, you know, take apart and get out of the way, but there's just a bunch of brackets set up right here that I'm gonna have to figure out and uh, hopefully I can just easily get it all off. But uh, yeah, once that's off, then I can get the belt off and then basically the AC compressor, the power steering pump will be ready to unbolt. <laughs> Okay, so just got this piece off. It was hooked up right there, like I said. About three bolts on the brackets. Well, actually there was two nuts holding the power steering bracket to this, and then there were three bolts that this was being held on by. Now I thought that it would just come off with those bolts out, but these lines are connected to the exhaust manifolds what it looks like it runs to right there. And then I'm assuming the other one goes to the other exhaust manifold. Um, so you still have to get that off of there. And the size for that is a 15 16 Took me a little bit of time to figure out what size it was. So that is a 15 16 Yeah, I think the belt is pretty much ready to come off. Might need to go down there, get that nut off for that bracket. But uh, I think it's good to come off. And just like that, the belt is out. Okay, so I ended up doing a couple other things off camera because I started getting really focused on working on this thing that I totally forgot to film some of the other stuff that I had done. So 
as you can see, um, I don't even know what these things are called that sit right here, but um, they were like those two distributor boxes. I got those off and then I disconnected the wiring harness from, you know, wherever it was plugged in over here. And then I also disconnected it from the AC compressor that's right there. And I also went ahead and took the fan out. That was super easy. There's just like two eight millimeter bolts on each side. Um, there might be two on this side, but as far as this car goes, there was only one from what I could see. Now, I also did go ahead and get the AC compressor unbolted from the motor as well as the power steering pump. And it's honestly really, really simple. So the AC compressor just has three bolts and they are pretty long, but they're just the 10 millimeter. You just need to get a couple extensions to get to it. It's a little bit awkward, but it's really not that bad at all if you have extensions. And then as far as the power steering pump, as you can see, it's sitting right there. It's pretty much the same thing. There are four 10 millimeter bolts though. And one of them is a little bit awkward to get to. I'm trying to figure out if there's a good camera angle for me to get to, to show you guys why this one bolt is kind of awkward. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but I'm gonna try and point you in the right direction. As you can see right there, is the awkward bolt to get to because this power steering line sits like right in front of it. So the reason why that bolt is a little bit difficult to get to is because that line is sitting right in front of it. And the only way to get it out is to get a wrench and just constantly sit there and wrench it a little bit, take the wrench off, put it back on, wrench it a little bit. It probably took me about, I don't know, 10 minutes to get it out, just sitting there with a wrench and my arms started to get tired. But for anybody out there who's like willing to spend a little bit more money or you're trying to get this done the quickest way possible, you can just easily invest into a ratcheting wrench, which I probably will end up buying here soon, but it's basically just a 10 millimeter. So just buy a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench and that thing will come out super quick. So this is probably pretty boring stuff for anybody who's watching this channel for some fun entertainment, like, you know, driving a 600 horsepower bullet. But I figured that there are a few folks out there who are trying to pull their motor out of their GT or their Cobra or whatever, and they're struggling with a few of those little issues that people run into when pulling these motors. And there's a few of them, and I feel like in a lot of the videos where they talk about pulling the motor, that they get way overlooked. Once we get this motor running, this thing is gonna be sweet. Yeah, it is. This thing is gonna purr, and it's gonna sound amazing. Put a nice cat back, with some nice mufflers on it. Yeah. We got a couple different options for the exhaust. We're probably gonna go with a Bassani X-Pipe because I already have one. But as far as the cat back and mufflers go, we're still kind of deciding. As far as the wheels go too, we might end up keeping these on the car, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what black wheels look like on the car. Obviously the CCWs are still sitting over there, so that might be an option if I can, you know, figure out the lip sizes and whatnot with those. But those are supposed to be for the bullet. So if they do end up going onto the Cobra, they're not gonna stay very long, but it would just be cool to see. So that's probably gonna do it for this video. Hopefully in the next video, uh, the motor might be ready to pull and we might actually pull it out in the next video because there's really not much else that needs to be done to get the motor out. I still need to get the drive shaft out of the car and then from there, I think I just need to disconnect the wiring harness within a couple places underneath the motor. I can't remember if I need to pull the starter off of it or not. I think I do, but I could be wrong. And then from there, I just need to get the transmission cross member off and unbolt the engine mounts from this thing. And then I think it's pretty much good to come out. So definitely tune in for the next video where we could possibly have the motor out of the car. And then once we get the motor out, we'll be one step closer to getting this thing fired up and ready to go. So thanks for watching guys. Catch y'all in the next one.